Hello, and welcome to the engineeringsupplies.co.uk tutorial on solid round shank cutters. In this video, we are going to be looking at initially selecting a cutter type based on your machine's capability. Identifying cutter styles in relation to whether it is a slot drill or end mill. Explaining the functions and limitations of slot drills and end mills. And covering the importance of chip clearance and engagement when considering a cutter's function, flutes, and material being machined. Machines, and the best cutters, for them. The first thing to consider when selecting a round shank cutter, is the machine's maximum RPM. Older machines, like conventional bridge ports, or entry-level machines, tend to have low spindle speeds. Usually these have maximum speeds in the region of 3000 RPM. Machines with low RPMs are generally not capable of achieving the benefits of running high-performance solid carbide cutters, as they simply run too slow. For example, the recommended speed for running a 6mm solid carbide cutter, on aluminium, should be 10,000 RPM. Consequently, your first choice of cutter for these machines should be, cobalt, and high-speed steel, and at a push K30 carbide. K30 solid carbide cutters would mainly be recommended if machining a difficult material where cobalt and high-speed steel are just not hard enough. Don't worry though, if you have one of these machines, picking a cutter from cobalt, HSS, and K30 will still give you excellent performance and great tool life. If you have a high-performance machine that has a high spindle speed, you have a much bigger selection open to you. Your machines will be more tailored to running K30 as an entry-level low-cost carbide cutter for general machining. To material-specific entry-level cutters, for example, LUXP on aluminium. And the high-performance, material-specific cutters we do, for example, our master mill range. Higher performance usually equates to lower cycle times and increased tool life. As a result, the cost of a solid carbide cutter increases in relation to its performance. For this reason, when selecting a solid carbide cutter, you will need to offset the cutter cost against the performance and the cost of the job you are machining. Slot drills and end mills. Solid milling cutters are generally classified into two types of designations, slot drills or end mills. Slot drills are generally designed for multiple purposes. These include, for creating slots in material, ramping, plunging, notching, and interpolation. As a result, they are generally microns smaller in diameter than an end mill, and are classified as a slot drill, by having three or fewer flutes. An end mill's main purpose is for milling on the outside of a job, or what we would call profiling. An end mill is generally identified as having four flutes or more. Conventionally slot drills have either, one, two, or three flutes, and are center cutting. Center cutting means that one of the flutes cross over to meet the other at the end. This meant that in the past when only HSS cutters were available, if you wanted to plunge and then create a slot, you needed a slot drill. You can profile mill with a slot drill but there are a couple of disadvantages. Frequently, flutes are shorter than an end mill. As a result, you would need to do more passes and your feed rate and surface finish would suffer, as you had less flutes doing the cutting. Comparatively, when profile milling with an end mill, as more flutes are used, the surface finish and feed rate tend to be much higher. When all end mills used to be high-speed steel, they always had a hole on the cutting end. The hole was necessary for locating a center when they were grinding the flutes and putting surface preps on. The downside to this was that the flutes would not meet at the end and hence not be center cutting. This meant you couldn't plunge more than a couple of millimeters, which was the depth of the centering hole on the cutting end, as it would leave a raised pip in the middle. The only way of plunging with one of these cutters was to pre-drill a hole larger than the non-cutting end of the end mill before plunging. How do I decide on a slot drill or end mill? The way cutting tools are manufactured has changed now, and almost all cutters, regardless of the number of flutes, are center cutting, meaning you can plunge with them. 
So, you're probably thinking, I should just use an end mill for all my applications, because I can plunge, do slots, it will improve my surface finish, and I can increase my feed rate, which is the speed a cutter moves across the surface of the material. Well, there's multiple reasons why slot drills and end mills still have their place. An end mill has a longer flute length than a slot drill for several reasons. The main being, chip clearance and secondly engagement. Where you are cutting a slot, the cuttings need to go somewhere, which is generally out the back or coming out the top of the spiral flutes. The fewer flutes you have, the better the chip extraction will be, as the flutes of the cutter will invariably be deeper. If your chip extraction isn't good, the cuttings, or swarf, can gum up in the cutter flutes, or in the slot. This can cause all sorts of problems, ranging from, poor surface finish, cutting oversize, and tool breakage. The other key benefit of a slot drill's fewer flutes, is that the cutter can handle more pressure. The reason for this is that adding flutes eats into the body of the cutter, weakening it. This is important, because when cutting a slot, you often use the full diameter of the cutter when machining, resulting in high pressure on the tool. A slot drills fewer and deeper flutes, also help relieve some of this pressure, by ejecting the cuttings more easily from its path. Comparatively, when profiling with an end mill, approximately half of the diameter of the cutter is used when taking a pass. This means, that there is less pressure on the cutter, allowing you the option of a longer flute, and because the other half of the cutter is in mid-air, the swarf has somewhere to go, so chip extraction isn't an issue. The material being machined should also influence how many flutes a cutter should have. Soft materials like copper, brass, aluminium, nylons, delrin, plastics, and wood all like fewer flutes because the material is soft and gums up easily. Single and two flute cutters and flutes with high helixes are excellent for chip clearance. A high helix is an increased angle on the spiral of the flutes. They help remove the cuttings away from the workpiece quickly and prevent the flutes from clogging and gumming up. In conclusion, when deciding between a slot drill or end mill for your application, the best rule of thumb is, if cutting slots and plunging, go with two flutes. If profiling, go with four flutes or more. If price is a big concern, and you want one tool that will cover you for slots, plunging, and external profiling, pick three flute. Just remember if you pick three flute, your external surface finish could be better and faster, and your chip evacuation when slotting, could be better. We hope you found our solid round shank cutter tutorial, helpful and informative. In addition to this, there are other related tutorials and guides, on our engineeringsupplies.co.uk website, and on our YouTube channel. Keep checking back, as we plan to be adding to these regularly. If you aren't familiar with our site, we highly recommend you watch our guides. These, along with the information covered in this tutorial, will greatly assist you in narrowing your search and assure you select the best tooling for your application.